your royal highness, farmer king. Um, farming is going to be my theme. Um, uh, your excellencies, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you, Cecilia, for providing graceful continuity to this and other occasions uh, of this um, series of conferences. But what I want to do is to give you a shock, and I want you to realize um, why farmers are uh, going to save the world. Uh, farmers manage 90% of the water used. Their food supply chain, ag agricultural food supply chain, needs 90% of the water that society uses. So every individual, every political economy, 90% of the water is in the food supply chain. 90% um, of the water, of that water is actually physically handled by farmers. So farmers clearly are key. Uh, I, as I was sitting, I was thinking, perhaps, uh, Your Majesty, you should be on the panel today because clearly you're more qualified than the scientists here to uh, be expert in this activity. I just want to put a little, a few thoughts in your mind. And FAO, there must be some one or two people from FAO here, Food and Agricultural Organization. Just remember those, those terms. At the end, I'm going to uh, substitute something for F, farmer, obviously, but something for A and something for O to try and give us a sense of uh, who, who is going to do, who has done the important things to keep abreast of the demand for food and who um, must in future continue to do that. And uh, if you think about organizing uh, the theme that this conference looks at, not so much according to the science framework, which I'm obviously signed up to in every, <laughs> every cell of my being, I am a scientist, but over the years, especially over the past 10 years, I've realized that in water, it's the farmer who actually manages the water, and the farmer, like everyone else in the food supply chain, is in something that looks like a market. Um, markets are wonderful, people in them can compete um, <coughs> safely if they have good rules, but the message that I'm providing today is that uh, the A of um, FAO later on, I'm going to say we need to do something about the rules uh, that that market runs by, because at the moment that market runs completely blind. We know that over the past 20 or 30 years we've discovered the stewardship which <laughs> Johan so brilliantly introduced uh, earlier on. What a wonderful foundation. The anxiety, um, informed anxiety, which he provided for us is typical of, of the intellectual. Uh, that's what, what science does. Uh, but we obviously need to have some optimism there as well. And uh, I'm going to bring and weave that in later on because we need to have informed uh, an optimistic private sector of markets uh, dealing with this problem. So although we've tended this morning to sense that it's uh, scientists and agencies, government agencies that are running things, it isn't. It's the private sector. All the food grown is grown by farmers in the private sector. That's 90% of the water. The other agents in that, uh, and we're going to hear, and this links nicely forward to the Nestle presentation, uh, the big corporates in the, um, in the food supply chain uh, are also very proudly in the, in the private sector, and they obey the rules of the market as it is. But since <coughs> that, this 90% of water on which we uh, depend for our food, uh, but the practices in that market determine whether we have good stewardship of that water, well, we don't have the accounting rules to, to keep that in place. So everything that I'm saying is consistent with what we've heard before in one or two of the presentations, both by Colin and Johan, that green water is tremendously important, and our farmer king certainly deals not with irrigation but with, with green water. And uh, since we're of similar age, I presume he must have been associated with the farm for all of a period in which the productivity of the water on that farm has increased three times. I don't know whether you're aware of that, but because of the improvements and the inputs, all the other inputs which are mobilized and have been more cleverly mobilized, and including scientific inputs, uh, the productivity of water in this part of the world and Northwest Europe and lots of other places that are neoliberal and, and are so supposedly advanced economies have been associated with a trebling productivity. No one thinks of it that way, but farmers have achieved that. They're at the interface. They have to put up with the weather, the risks of the weather, 
Uh, they have to put up the risks of the market and the uncertainties and volatilities, and they have to survive. And in order to do that, they need to have a very close relationship with governments. So what I'm trying to show is that there's a private sector. I'm going to establish in a moment that there are no rules in that private sector to make to encourage them to be good stewards, or not. at the moment there aren't. Um, we, we, and, but they know they have all the, the problems. Uh, food security is a national security issue. The, foods, um, uh, the farm lobby has been around longer than science, and the relationship between farmers and power is automatic. And when I go around the world talking to farmers, uh, I never come to the conclusion that they would come to me or any other scientist for a solution, but I know they've got this sort of relationship with power. So uh, we need to understand those things, why they exist, and therefore this is primarily, as many people who know me in the room will assume, uh, it's a political issue. Uh, we need to understand the politics and the political economy of the food supply chain. So the food supply chain, as I said, um, farmers at the beginning handled 90%. They handled all that green water and have travel productivity in some parts of the world. In Africa, they haven't yet, which is why there are places where <coughs> we could, and certainly Africa needs to, treble and quadruple its food production. And <laughs> we can't be sure that it will, but there's a good chance that it that will. And that if you look back over the Northwest European experience, if we'd been giving this talk in uh, 1800, uh, the yield of wheat per hectare would be one ton. Uh, by 1900, it was two. By 1950, it was the three that, were, that perhaps you inherited uh, when you started to take an interest in the farm. By 1990, it was, in, in, certainly in the UK, it was nine, ten, certainly eight, nine, ten, depending on, on, on the farm. So, the, so what is food security? What is, uh, if you can get ten times the productivity of the same water that you had some time ago. Well, Africa's clearly, at the, in so many places, at the 1800 level. It's not going to be 10 tons, but it could easily be three. So the, the farm's crucial. Then the, the rest of the food supply chain, the traders, in the, another room, <coughs> there, we're having, there's a session on trade, and uh, the, the, those agents are important. As I'm going to show, we're going to hear from Nestle, um, that... <coughs> Uh, the messaging that they can give forward and back in the food supply chain in relation to farmers especially is this precious part of the process which, which is evolving over the past, very recent past in fact. Um, so the, uh, something which has not quite happened at this meeting is happening in some rooms but not in all is this recognition of the, in terms of the uh, holistic view uh, that the private sector has a very important role. So I just want to finish by repeating that farmers are the main managers of water. We need to help them and protect them uh, because they do commit suicide more than other professions uh, all over the world, whether it's in, in Europe or in, 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 in India. So there's something that they're doing which is a bit more challenging and, and that we depend on. Uh, but. Uh, and uh, at this point in history, if I'd been giving this talk, or if someone had been giving a talk about one of the big issues, it would have been, uh, you know, the first failure of capitalism was getting labor wrong, slavery, uh, people not having a decent way of um, being part of the, the labor input system. Struggled with that for on and off for 100 years before we got that one right. The second failure of capitalism was getting the environmental stewardship right. This generation, my generation, younger generations, and the children of the, uh, the younger generation in the room will still be struggling with the stewardship issue. This is just part of it. Water is a central part of it. Uh, so we need to recognize this is not something that's going to change quickly, especially because <coughs> we have in the food supply chain a very dangerous um, market or a, a dysfunctional market system. It isn't because it's intentionally so. It's because we haven't had the... Um, the wit yet to put in the right rules. So the, this food supply chain runs with water being free. <coughs> in some countries, it's, in agriculture, there's a small charge for it, but it doesn't reflect its true value. So water isn't valued as an input, nor are the impacts of the misuse of it taken into account. So I'm led to 
uh, uh, to the conclusion that what we need is an accounting system which helps the farmers and the whole food supply chain run as a market which does properly allocate resources and not misallocate them as it does absolutely wholly with respect to water. So that leads me to say F is for farmers, A is for accountants. So farmers are saving the world, will save the world. Uh, accountants will save the world, very controversial. Uh, no one thinks that's a sensible thing to say. But all I'm, the economists don't know how to put in the rules. Um, economists, are wonderful, uh, economists are wonderful people, but they only know what should be done. They don't know what can be done. Uh, so, but we, we have developed over the years uh, accounting systems which um, <coughs> uh, are, are obviously put in place via legislation, so there's a whole lot of politics to do with that. But we need, in fact, to get the accountants on side. And I, 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 just, I discovered this from talking to someone who's speaking in another room on trade at the moment, Carl Hausman of, of Bungie. When, when I was pressing him on the stewardship, which Bungie, the big trader, one of the ABCD companies that trade probably 70% of the um, uh, staple food by, by weight at least, and <coughs> they've had 150 years in the fact case, in the case of Bungie, 200 years of experience of trading food internationally. And uh, as part of his experience in Brazil, he said, well, what we do is we help the Brazilian government police their what amounts to a set-aside policy. Um, they set aside up to 40% of the farm left in, in forest. But the government doesn't have the policing power to police that, but clearly a private sector uh, um, trader going around buying, food, buying grain does, so they, they help the government. So that, that's an example of how the private sector could uh, lead to better stewardship. But when I pressed him further, he always said, we keep the rules. And it took me a while to realize what he meant. But what he meant is we keep the accounting rules. But there are no rules for water, completely blind. So this uh, food supply chain is a magnificent market-looking thing which has got no rules for, for water. So we need somehow to do the politics, the politics, the politics with the farmers and with everyone else to somehow get some accounting rules in for water. The other thing is F for farmers, A for accountants, O for optimism. Um, <coughs> Gramsci, the famous Italian uh, f uh, socialist um, philosopher, has this, had this wonderful phrase, the optimism of practice and the pessim pessimism of the intellect. Well, we can see that great, even deeply informed introductory pessimism is natural if you're trying to get the story across, which Johann was. Uh, but, in fact, the whole of the management of water is in the optimistic. In order to be a private sector person, you have to be optimistic. You, you, you encounter the problems, you solve them. You don't think, oh, well, it's too difficult. You get on and solve them. So that's how we manage water in a private sector system with farmers and you know, huge corporations doing that sort of thing. So FAO, farmers <coughs> have saved the world and will save the world. And from now on, as good stewards, if we help them with the right politics and the right uh, accounting rules, A is for accountants will save the rule, save the world. I'm not saying we've got to price water anything, we, we, but we need to get to some point in which we get the politics of pricing water or valuing water right, and we need to have the continued optimism to deal with the problem, and that's in the private sector. Thank you very much.